Namaste. So, in our last episode, we quoted a long passage from Taitriya Upanishad. And this is a part of the context for the ongoing discussion about Adhikarana 3, Sutra 3, which we are going to complete in this episode. So... <laughs> Things got a little complicated there, but that's okay. We straightened it out. Now, if you're following the series, it will be in the correct order in the playlist. Shankaracharya introduces an alternate interpretation of the sutra. Or the aphorism means, Shastra Yonitvat, since the scriptures are its valid means of knowledge. Brahman is not known from any other source, since the scriptures are the valid means of its knowledge. The scriptures, that is, the Rig Veda, etc., just enumerated, are the valid means of knowing, yoni, the real nature of this Brahman. The idea implied is that Brahman is known as the source of birth, etc., of this universe from the scriptures alone that are valid means of knowledge. The scriptural text, that from which all these beings take birth, etc., Taitre Upanishad 3.1, was quoted under the previous aphorism. Opponent. What need is there again of this aphorism? Since by quoting such spiritual texts under the previous aphorism itself, it was shown that Brahman is to be known from the scriptures. The answer of the Vedantin is, since the scriptures were not explicitly alluded to by the previous aphorism, it might be suspected that an inference alone had been presented as the means of knowing Brahman by the previous aphorism, that from which, etc. Brahma Sutra 1.1.2. The type is in error. In order to eliminate that doubt, this aphorism says, Brahman is not known through any other means, since the scriptures are the valid means of its knowledge. Whew! So, again, heavy, heavy Shankara logic. But I have to confess, I love it. <laughs> so, what is he saying here? There is an alternate means, an alternate method of interpreting this aphorism this sutra. A sutra is meant to be interpreted. It's not meant to be a complete statement by definition. That's what a sutra is, simply a mnemonic device so that the student or the reader will remember a certain Upanishadic passage. And that's what he is insinuating here, or actually arguing here, uh, the, when the opponent says, you know, didn't we already figure that out? Wasn't that already proved in the last sutra? And of course, the answer is, no, actually, because you think it's an inference. But actually, the all these Upanishads summarized become the Vedanta Sutra. So every sutra refers back to some context of the Upanishads. And then he quotes the Taitariya again. The Taitariya Upanishad passage that we read in the last video explains that progressive form of meditation by which the more and more subtle metaphors for Brahman are experienced and known, realized, in a word. So when that understanding is plugged in here, he's saying in a very noble and gentlemanly way to the opponent that, dude, you don't get it. What this is really about is the process of self-realization. And how do we know how to approach Brahman? through the scriptures. And how do we know that Brahman even exists? 
through the scriptures. So the scriptures are created by Brahman, the omniscient, as part of the creation of the world, because after all, the scriptures exist in the world. So not only the scriptures, but the whole infrastructure that produces the scriptures and so on has to be supplied by the Lord. There's no other way. What are, you know, where else could they come from? They're certainly not the inventions of human beings. They're way beyond human intelligence. Just try studying them. Huh? Like, for example, in this theory, in this series. <laughs> so, we're trying to unravel all this so that we can have a better understanding. So here's this reciprocal relationship between Brahman and the scriptures and the aspirants for liberation. How are the aspirants going to know how to approach Brahman or even that Brahman exists? Only through the scriptures. And since Brahman is imperceptible, inconceivable and indescribable. How is anybody going to know about it unless Brahman itself reveals itself? So it does so through the scriptures. The Vedic scriptures are described as coming from the breathing of that great being. Brahman means the great, huh? the greatest. So this being is also omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. In the process of creating the worlds, he creates the scriptures and the religions in the world as means of approaching him. And of course, they're all of different qualifications and results because they're designed for different types of people. That is the complete nature of the complete, that he also provides complete means of realization. So, with this knowledge, with this background, one can begin the process of purifying the intellect through concentration. And as one does so, one reaches more and more subtle conceptions of the self, oneself and also Brahman, the great self. The aphorism itself is the authority from our point of view. In other words, since Brahman could never be known by inference, because huh? we don't possess the background, we don't possess the ground to create the inference on without Vedic knowledge. Once Vedic knowledge is there, we can derive any number and, and different styles of religions from it. Huh? This is called the Avaroha process of knowledge, that the knowledge is coming down from Brahman, which is the highest, through various levels of interpretation and application and description by different metaphors. And those are the religious texts that people use all over the world to approach Brahman in different degrees. So the process of sadhana is also revealed by Brahman in the scriptures. This is complete, a complete knowledge of the complete. And when that knowledge is applied through understanding, one realizes complete realization of the complete. And this is the completion of the human spirit. See, right now, we are all feeling incomplete. And this is why we strive in different ways to improve our condition, isn't it? We see the refrigerator getting emptier every day. We know we have to go to the store and complete our collection of nutrients. In the same way, every human endeavor is an effort to reduce suffering. So all human endeavors are motivated by that. Once we get past that, accepting that, embracing that, and saying, okay, now I want the ultimate remedy that removes all the suffering, not only from this life, but from the next life, then after some study and effort, <clears throat> we come to approach Brahman, because Brahman is that source of knowledge that is complete. 
Once we have that complete knowledge, we can perform effective efforts to realize the complete. And upon completion of those efforts, we realize complete beingness within ourselves. This is enlightenment. And eventually, one is actually able to transform one's environment into a space where the complete can be honored and respected and worshipped and studied. And that is what we're trying to do with Consciousness Research Center. We want to create an environment, whether it be virtual or in real life, where is a safe space to study one's own consciousness. Because consciousness is ineluctably transcendental, personal, and subjective. I brought up the question in the last video, are you conscious? And of course, everybody's going to say yes. So the next question is, how do you know that you're conscious? Can you prove that you are conscious, that you're conscious? No. You can talk about it, but that's not proof. I can even get a computer to do that <laughs> these days. But the actual proof is only in your own experience. If you apply this knowledge and you actually concentrate on Brahman, and you actually start to realize the different levels of more and more subtle manifestations and more and more subtle metaphors of Brahman, you will come to the same conclusion as the Upanishads themselves. Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Because I am conscious. Because I am aware. I am aware of being aware. And that, we have read in the Vedas, is the definition of Turiya. And Turiya is the direct manifestation of Brahman in consciousness. When it becomes conscious of consciousness in all its different forms. So this is the basis, this is the foundation, this is the ontological root in which all the Vedantic passages, all Upanishadic passages are written. For example, in the one we quoted from Taittiriya Upanishad in the previous video, Bhrigu, by repeated concentration on Brahman, realized progressively more subtle levels of being. From the Anamaya Kosha, the food body, to the Pranamaya Kosha, the energy body, to the Manamaya Kosha, the mental body, to the uh, Vijnanamaya Kosha, the intelligence body, and finally to the Anandamaya Kosha, the bliss body. These Upanishadic passages are the source from which all these conceptions are derived. And by knowing which, one is able to approach Brahman and ultimately realize it completely for oneself. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.